Today, I talk with the red jumpsuit apparatus. Let's check it. If you're in the scene, you definitely know who the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus is. They've been killing it since their debut album, Don't You Fake It, released in 2006, in which the song Face Down just blew the hell up, and with the song Your Guardian Angel blowing up internationally. The band has had five studio albums, a bunch of EPs, and a cover album coming up. I chatted with guitarist Randy Winter about tour, their cover album, answered some fan questions, and in the midst of all that, he threw me for a loop, handed me some bowling shoes, and we played a couple of games. Seriously. So without further ado, let's check it. What's up guys, the Pop Punk Dad here with the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. What is up? Our on. Why are we doing it here? That's right, we're, we do it. I came in and he's like, hey, what size are your shoes? So now we're bowling too. So uh, you guys been on the tour? What's tour been like? Uh, it's been awesome so far. Um, just started, but um, so far so good. <laughs> it's usually a good way to gauge it, just right off the bat. If you get along with everybody and everybody's cool and cohesive, like-minded and respectful, so that's what it's all about. So last time we talked, I, I interviewed you guys on a blog. Uh, not too long ago, and uh, The Awakening had just dropped uh, for a few months, and On Becoming Willing was number one on Billboard. Yeah, 12 consecutive weeks yeah, number one. Uh, we were mega stars about that. What was, what was your response to that? Like, how do you... Uh, well, I would just say, obviously it was globally well received. Um, we were kind of just shocked. I mean, because it's... We've had a few get in there, like, for five weeks, I think at the top that we've had so far is like seven. Yeah, it's 12 consecutive weeks at number one all the way through into the next year is uh, how long it was there. So yeah, we're all just uh, awesome. Yeah, we're just mega stoked. Really. <laughs> I talked to him for the last thing. But uh, he said this, uh, The Awakening was a concept. Mm -hmm. How did that idea come about? Well, initially, um, I know Ronnie had uh, mentioned the idea of doing a concept record, and he kind of gave a vague description of the, um, the idea behind the character, and, uh, basically spiraling out and the uh, self analyzation and the recovery process. And I started at that point. I want to say November of 2016, right now, on The Awakening, the song, and did a demo from start to finish, and uh, sent that over to him and his producer, uh, wife Angela, and she's incredible, by the way, engineering wise as well, so we just kind of, I just literally gave them the session, and just took life its own way from there. Before you know, we had the song was already ready, and it was tied right into the idea, and Ronnie and I, as brothers have always worked really well, so he just took that and just wrapped that to the third phase of movement one, and then that kind of goes right into movement two. Um, yeah, so it, it really um, took life of its own. There's a lot of bands that do like uh, graphic novels, and movies, you got Cohen, like, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I love the other yeah. um, You guys ever thought of doing like a graphic novel or something like this? Uh, An umbrella academy? I mean, it, it's. <laughs> With Red Jumpsuit, I wouldn't roll anything out of this one. Yeah. Really. It's hard to say because there's just so many like talented people in this band and um, we're all like really willing to just take on anything. So if we all decide to do something, it's pretty much uh, unstoppable. Uh, you guys first were Irish meal. Like right out of the gate, you guys blew up. Uh, how did you guys prepare for that success? Well, in the beginning, the focal point really was just Florida. So what we had done before that was, this was band number four at that point. We actually had two separate bands running at the same time. Um, well, actually three. There was one called Dishonest, and then there was RJA, which inevitably became RJA, and then another band called Chronic as well. So what we did was, the local scene that we had already been working for almost a decade, we were really, really tactfully aware that we needed to transfer that momentum and not lose it. So we started opening for our own band and transferring our fan base directly into our new projects. And it worked beautifully. We took over Florida very quickly. We also, um, I was doing web design at the time, so I contacted radio ad reps and myself, outsourced them to run ads in different areas. And uh, that was the focal point at first. Because you get uh, a good lockdown, like say, 
the you know, the it can kind of spread. These are and if the radio picks it up in one place, the syndication, it's pretty and likely for that to get word to another place. So that's when really, really it was doing yeah. good on its own. But then once it was serviced by a label after the official label thing you think release, that's when it really charted what just camped out still on the way. I mean, I, I hear it every once in a while. I'm like the alt, alt I mean, I heard it today. Uh, coming here, uh, on the alt radio station. It's still active. Huge. Yeah, it's a good, good success uh, domestically in the U.S. Uh, other territories, and as far as like Southeast Asia, there were different focal points. Uh, that was uh, Party Angel, the smash over there. Yeah, there's just been different focal points. This comes from one of the people from the groups. Uh, they said, did you ever expect the album, um, uh, Don't You Fake It, 13 years later, for people to still be listening? Well, it's hard for me to uh, time to answer that because my brother is the primary lyric writer. But knowing how we wrote things in the previous bands, I would say, like, you kind of have in your mind, like, that you're not wanting to be a scene band. Yeah. Like a lot of bands, copy bands, but like we always wanted to reinvent bands. We, we really didn't even start covering other bands until like more recent years actually. We really yeah, can focus on creating music versus copying. Yeah. So for us it was always all about innovation. And then the lyrical motivation, which was always planning to see the spirituality. So for us it was hopeful that that would happen. Yeah. But you know, you can't just get that on anything. You can't net the end. Say, yeah, it's gonna happen. <laughs> That's what we would have liked to have happened in the past. So we've just been really um, happy and stoked that God has just wants us to be able to make a living and help impact people's lives the way we have uh, by just using the gifts that we have. Speaking of uh, covering bands, uh, you guys are putting out cover songs. So how did you guys decide? Yeah, we're doing an entire cover record. So far, two songs are How did you guys decide what songs you're going to pick? At this point, Ronnie has just been kind of like, picking them off and then now we've all kind of started like well, oh that would be a cool one you kind of go back through your mind of like the cover songs that you've thought about over the years and if you have any that are common denominators that every time you hear it again you're like oh that was going to be a good one that's the one that kind of comes back into the hat like Land on other is really threw me for yeah they knocked that out of the park yeah big time uh, that yeah. was mainly Espy um, and Ronnie working on that I'm a huge yeah. Colin Hayes I love Colin that's cool he's like the Australian Bob Dylan right <laughs> Um, is there any songs from... Well, if you like that, you got uh, Wild Ride Ahead. Yeah. This, that, well, this album's going to be out of control. Yeah. Um, are there any songs that didn't make the cut? Uh, there will always be songs that don't make the cut. Yeah. And a lot of times they just get revamped. And next thing you know, that's the single on the next record. You just never know. This one is another one from the groups. What do you guys have uh, uh, for advice you give to up and coming bands? Being out at like... I mean, everything has shifted these days. Yes, it has. Where, uh, it's been it's like, actually the easiest and the worst it's ever been. Yeah. The easiest because technology is so available, but the worst because it's so oversaturated. Yeah, you so, can blow up on SoundCloud every night. At the same time, you can be on you know, YouTube and Facebook for years and never right. be seen. Right, that's the problem. It's oversaturated. So the best thing you can do as a local artist is to not copy anybody whatsoever. Do your own thing 100% individually. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. In fact, try to do something complete opposite, because then you will stand out. Make sure it's something that you're passionate about, and that you feel like you're gifted and talented about. Make sure your lyrics actually have timeless meaning, not some garbage that's going to be on mainstream radio, and then gone a year later, and people won't even remember. That's just, you're in and out. That's, that's not a good idea. Just focus on those things. There's like the a lot of like super easy, so. All you got to do is just, uh, you're one guy in the band who's the nerdy guy or guru. Now it's not that. Now he's like the shit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah everything's fully shifted. If you know Pro Tools and Logic, you're Find saying. that guy. Yeah. Well, we're uh, Steinberg guys. We've always been Steinberg. Yeah. Steinberg was the first platform that really started uh, after the Yamaha 2 kind of peaked out. And then it started going um, Steinberg. He's the one who invented WaveLab, which is the master platform that existed before. All these other platforms, so yeah, we've always been Steinberg all the way. To the dead! <laughs> there's only one more, and it's uh, after this tour, what's next for you guys? After this tour, we have another West Coast win, which is going to be four California dates, and then there's a one-off, as we call it, over in Reno, 
And then after that, we're going to be doing some under the radar recording for um, what will be after the cover album. Sweet. So there will be a new album. Of course. We're always thinking months, if not months, years ahead. This has been the Pop Punk Dad <laughs> with the red jumpsuit apparatus. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Peace. Hey guys, now that we're at the end of the video, thank you for like, commenting, and subscribing. You can check out daily vlogs on thepoppunkdad.com, which features daily reviews and interviews from awesome bands. Head on over to the Pop Punk Dad official merch shop, where you can buy cool things like that right there. It helps the channel out and lets me know that you love me. I have a weekly podcast called the Pop Punk Dadcast, which is on SoundCloud and iTunes now. Please subscribe. While you're at it, cruise around and check out other content on this channel. You can check out all my social medias, my IG, my FB, and my Twitter, at the Pop Punk Dad. And above all else, guys, stay pop punk. Later.